Matt here. I'm going to show you guys how to make a quick maze game based on our last tutorial where we've got the cat and we've got our key presses and our cat can move up, down, left, and right. I'm going to move a little quick through this, but it's a YouTube video. You can always pause it and rewind it. So what do we want to do? We want to make a maze. So what I want to do is I want this background to be my maze. The background in Scratch is the stage. I'm going to click on stage. Look, my code went away. What happened? That's because I'm on the stage. If you click over here, back in your cat, here's the code we made. So I'm going back to the stage. And I basically want my backdrops, which are the backgrounds, I want to make a new one. So when you click on backdrops, you get this paint editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw squares in here and rectangles to make walls for my maze. Watch how I do it. Um, I'm going to make a square. And it says outline and fill. I just want fill. I don't want any outline. So I'm going to click on outline, click this no color, and we can keep it at purple. We'll have some purple walls on our maze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing squares like this. And you're going to have to do some trial and error and figure out how you want your maze to look and what the walls are going to look like and things like that. But I've done this a couple times before, so I'm just going to start drawing a couple things here. And it doesn't have to be crazy. That's probably good enough. I'm going to go back to code. And because we're going to end up making multiple levels, make sure you do this. I'm still in stage. Stage has no code. I'm going to give it some code. Events, when green flag clicked. Looks, switch to backdrop, backdrop one. Backdrop one is really the only one I have. And if I go to backdrops, you can see backdrop one is this maze I just drew. We're eventually going to make another backdrop by clicking here and choosing paint. And we're going to draw a second one. And that's going to be level two. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back. As long as you have this code, you're good. Now, I'm going to go back to my cat sprite. My cat is too big to fit through this maze, right? So we're going to change its size. So we're still in the looks column here and this set size block, I'm going to try 50%. Now I'm going to click on it. I wonder if he'll be able to fit through there. It's still a little big. So let's make him 30%. Click on it. That looks a little better. I think that will work. Okay. So now I'm going to place that at the beginning of my code. Set size to 30%. Also, I want my sprite to start here and let's say this is the finish. So my sprite's going to have to go, can't go this way, up here, down here, around, and up here to finish. So we'll start the sprite right here. We can tell Scratch to do that by going to Motion. And do you see Go To? See this number, negative 198, negative 124? It's an X and Y coordinate of where I am on the board. If I click and drag my sprite, can you see how the numbers have changed now. They're 13108. If I click my sprite and bring them here, now these numbers reflect where he is. 192x, 147y. So all I have to do is drag my sprite to where I want him to start. And then I'm going to pull out this go-to block. And I'm also going to put that at the beginning, not inside the forever loop, but right up here at the top. And now when I click the green flag, I can start walking my sprite through the maze. But look, I can walk through walls right now. Now that's cheating. We're going to stop a player from being able to do that next. And to do that, we're going to need sensing and a conditional. So let's grab a conditional, control, if, then, sensing. And we're going to go to touching color. I'm going to pull this out. The color of my walls are purple, so watch how I set it to be purple. I click here, and then I get to choose a color here, or I can choose this eyedropper. That's what I want you to click, eyedropper, and then move over to anywhere that's purple. And when you click, now I'm set to that exact purple color. So if we're touching the color purple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the sprite back to the start by also going to this same location. So I need another one of these go-to blocks. Um, make sure the numbers are the same. You can go to motion. If you haven't moved your sprite, the numbers should still match up. 
I'm going to take that block, put it in here, and then I'm going to add it to this list of conditionals inside the forever loop at the bottom. Now make sure you don't ex accidentally put it inside another condition. It has to be underneath these conditionals and look like this. Now let's watch what happens when I play this game. Do do do, walking around, I'm doing good, and then, oh, I hit a wall. Look, I'm back to the beginning. Oh, oh, I hit a wall, I hit a wall, 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 hit a wall. I keep going back to the beginning whenever I touch that color purple. So now the game is kind of functioning. We've got a background, we've got a background with uh, colored walls, and when I hit them, I go back to the beginning. Now, we're going to need a goal at the end, and this is where a second sprite will come in. Also, this is where we're going to bump up our rubric score by adding a second sprite. Check this out. The 89 to 80 level says two or more levels, two or more sprites, conditionals, and we'll get to broadcast and receive in another video. But we're going to get some of these things done here so we can get our grade up higher for this project. Watch how I do it. I'm going to do it kind of quick. We're going to make another sprite that's going to be the goal. I'm going to add another sprite by clicking here. Choose a sprite. Let's say our cat is trying to get to, you know, you could put some food in there. Cats like to eat fish, so I'm going to put a fish in there. So here's our fish, big fish right here. I'm going to put the fish over here where I want the end goal to be. The cat's trying to get the fish. Fish is a little too big, and also the fish has no code. So let's say control, I mean events, when green flag clicked, motion, go to, so the fish will always go there at the beginning of the game. Let's set the fish's size, just like we did to the cat. Let's do 50% for the fish. That looks good. And now when we start our game, the fish will always be there, the cat will always be here. Cat moves through the maze, if you can, if you're good enough. You get to the fish, and now we want something to happen. So let's go back to the cat's code. We need another conditional. We need to say, if then, we need to go to sensing. And now we're going to use this top one, touching. If touching fish, then we're going to do something like, uh, say, you got the fish for two seconds. So now that means you've, you've beat the maze and you hit your goal. Okay. What we really want to do is advance to level two, because we need two or more levels to get some points in here, right? So now keep this conditional out here real quick. We're going to go to stage again. We're going to go to backdrops and we're going to now we're going to do that thing where we create another level. Now we're going to create a second maze, but one thing you need to do is you need to change your color of your walls because um, whenever you hit the wall, you're going to go back to a different place, really. So let's choose any different color, any color you want to use. Let's try this weird green color. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing where I draw some walls for this maze. This maze might be a little tougher because it's, you know, the next level here. But there we go. That's good enough. That looks good. That's going to be backdrop two. So what you want to do is go to your sprite, go back to your cat. And basically we had, we had this code right here, right? says you got the fish now we want after you get the fish let's go to looks you want to switch to backdrop two that's going to change the stage who started at backdrop one it's going to force a change so when the game starts we're like this when you actually get to the fish up here it's going to force a change once we put this in here to backdrop two backdrop two is the one we just drew it's this one right here okay so Switch to backdrop two. The other thing is now in our first maze, my cat started here. In this green maze, level two, I want my cat to start here. 
So drag your cat wherever you want to start in this new maze. Go back to motion. Your updated coordinates will be here already in this go to xy. Let's place this inside of this conditional and now we're ready to start uh, the second level of the maze. Now you might want to move your goal as well, the fish. The fish might move too. In this case, my fish is not going to move, so it's going to stay right here. But this conditional does need to go down here. Now let's watch gameplay. Oh, you have to click this green flag up here for all green flags. The stage has a green flag. The cat has a green flag. So instead of running your game from here, from now on, now that we have multiple sprites and stages that have codes, we always use this green flag right here. Now I click here. I'm in level one. My cat's in the right spot. I'm going to start playing. If I hit the wall, I go back. But if I get through, I should be able to beat my own maze. Hopefully I can. Boom, you got the fish. And then two seconds later, look, we've started level two. Now I'm moving through this second maze. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to show you how to fix this in the next video. But if I solve level two, boom, you got the fish. I go back and level two is right there. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to do a level three. And we're actually going to make a new sprite. So there's a new goal every time. Uh, but that's it for now. That should boost your grade up a little more if you've started this uh, based on the last tutorial and you finished this and you wanted to make a maze game. This is looking pretty good. So stay tuned for the next video. All right, see ya.